Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thank you for joining us, Pearls with Veronica. Thank you for tuning us on Tuesday night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us and share the file. I'm Jerry Woods Live Worldwide, and welcome to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Media. Thank you for your Hey, Veronica, are you on mute? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. You're live. <laughs> okay, good evening, good evening, good evening. I apologize for being on mute. <laughs> Welcome to Pearls with Veronica, a show geared toward grief and loss and the process of living for it with Jerry Royce Live on Positive Power 21 Christian Media and Spreaker Podcast Live. Hope, inspiration, and heal. Are you grieving from the loss of a loved one and don't know how to keep moving? Have recent changes in life not allowed you to grieve other losses besides physical ones? Are you feeling out of sorts because of anxiety, depression, and life stressors? Has this change caused you to experience life transition? Are you looking for solutions to help you move forward on your journey to healing and hope? Tonight, my guest, Cherie, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, (laughs) Cherie Barnes, a grief coach and counselor and advocate of healing, will take us on the journey to be a better you. Good evening, Cherie. Good evening. How are you? I'm well. Welcome to Pearls with Veronica. I am so excited to learn. Thank you for having me. (laughs) You're welcome. I'm excited um, to learn tonight along with our listening audience on becoming a better you um, through hope, healing, and inspiration. Tell us about Cherie, the author, grief, and advocate. Well, I always tell people um, this journey is by accident. I never, never, never wanted to be an author. I'm like, okay, I I read books in the bookstore, and that's good. But when it came to my own journey, I'm like, okay, I can't just sit this to the side. I need to just do something. And so, um, like I said, my, 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 uh, my journey has been an accident, but I'm so glad that God has trusted me to be able to share um, my pros of wisdom and share what I have been been going through my, the last three years. And so I'm just grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful that he's allowed me to continue to be a steward um, over helping people um, deal with grief. Amen. Amen. How did you begin your journey into grief and loss? Well, I unexpectedly lost uh, my beloved Mark. Um, in 2017. And so it was a really tough journey. I just knew that, you know, we're going to build our lives together and we're going to, you know, make something wonderful of it. And it came to a point where it did not happen. And so after um, his loss, 
I found myself in a place of uh, darkness. I found myself in a place where I couldn't kind of get out of that hole. And so I needed to figure out um, what to do. And as a therapist, you know, you can't tell yourself what to do as a therapist. You can't tell yourself what to do as a grief coach. And so I had to figure out what I could do in order to move forward. And so I began to write. And so my writing journey began as an accident. Um, But I found that as I began to put pen to paper between um, my, my tears on the actual paper, that it helped me feel better. And so that's um, where I started. And so I've been on that journey the last three years. Last three years. Wow. I can relate to the the darkness mm-hmm. and the grief fog. <laughs> I mm-hmm. too lost yeah. um, my husband um, in 2015. So it's been five years for me. Okay. And you, you, you walk around People see you smiling, <laughs> but they really yes. just don't know how you're actually feeling deep down inside. Absolutely, and, Veronica. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. Um, the year before he passed away, uh, I want to say maybe a couple of years before he passed away, actually, I began to write. I thought I was drawing. And Pearls with Veronica was birthed out of, you know, what I was going through with my dad and then you know, with my husband. And like you said, you you mentioned about that grief, the grief fog. And yes. you're in it, and you just don't know what to do. And you stated as a grief coach, you didn't know how, you, you just couldn't tell yourself what to do, so you began to put pen to paper. Yes. And I can imagine how um, Mark, your beloved, death change you? In what ways did his death change you? Oh, my God. We'll be on here to tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, there was so many lessons that he taught me that, you know, I'm just like, well, wait a minute. What am I supposed to do now? I mean, he was really into um, family. He was really into you know, finances. And so he taught me many things about he was, had real estate and that kind of thing. And so he taught me many things about how to get myself moved to the next level. And so he wanted me to be able to get my finances in order. He wanted me to be able to uh, work to the point where I didn't have to worry about what uh, my finances look like later on in life. And mm-hmm. so um, those are just some of the memories that I remember. He always fussed at me. I need you to take care of this. I need you to put more in your 401K. And I need you to, you know, have another account somewhere and just have some money because, Cherie, <laughs> you just don't know what life would have you go through. And so right. I am so excited that I actually did that. And I, I went kick, kicking and screaming, Veronica. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I don't need to do all that. You're going to be here. You're going to be able to tell me what I need to do, you know. But um, I'm, I'm excited that I actually didn't listen to him, you know, because of, of his uh, advice and, and different things that he taught me. Um, I am in a better place when it comes to work, my retirement and things like that. Right. So, that's just one of the things that I remember just acutely, like, do this, do this, do this. And I'm I'm fussing, like, I don't want to do that. You, you're going to be around for <laughs> years. I'm not doing that. But I remember, yes. you know, mm-hmm. so that was one of the most um, important things. Most, yes, yes man. That stuck out yes, the man. most. Because I know, like, with my husband, um, he had an account, um, several accounts and he said, I need you to remember the passcode to these accounts because you just, yes. like you said, you just don't know. And I said yes. to him, like you said, you were kicking and screaming. And so I sat <laughs> looking at him like, child, I don't need to know that. Where, where are you right. trying to go to? <laughs> where you think you're going? And so yep. you know, he was like, you just don't know. I need you. So I, I've committed several things to memory and it has paid off in, in doing so yep. like with yourself. It has truly paid off in doing so. Um, <laughs> that's true. 
I mean, it's like, I don't need to know that right now, but, you know, they're saying do this, you know, it just kind of moves you to a different, you know, level. So, you know. Yes, yeah, because I've encountered those are homeless. Lessons, those are lessons yeah, that you learn. learn. Yep. <laughs> and I've taught my daughters as well, you know, and I just pray that I have been an example to my, you know, my two daughters and my son. Um, oh, tomorrow yeah. or neither today is promised to you and to, especially to my daughter that's married, <laughs> you know, yes, um, do this, do that, do, you know, look at this, sit down and talk about this. Because there are some things that we didn't talk about, but I learned, um, after his death and I, I always handled certain things anyway. So when it time, came time to, um, like insurances and, you know, getting your, your car tax, <laughs> yeah. you know, paying taxes. Yeah. Those things I knew how to do, you know, I knew that. But like, okay, what am I supposed to okay, you got this big chunk of income that's longer no longer here. So Veronica, you yeah. aren't working, girl, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you that's know? true. But, but you don't think about that stuff, you know. No, what you don't happen, you don't you know you don't think you don't about think it. about it. You don't think about it at all. You know, no, and yeah, I I'm, and I read that, you know, Sheree is a best Selling international author. <laughs> so yeah, tell us about the book. I think I went Kevin with that too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm on that same journey, Sharice. So I would, I'll be reaching out to you. I'm on that oh. kicking it. Where I'm supposed to start? Yeah. How, what, what am I supposed to do? Show me, God. Yeah, Teach me, Lord. You know what? I found that my first book, Twelve Lessons of Healing Through Grief, is actually going to be celebrating a anniversary and so it'll it'll be three years in November um my very first book and so I wrote that book probably seven months after my loss and so and so that 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 uh writing was still very raw and I tell people all the time I sat on the edge of my bed between tears writing that book. Some days I had one word on the page. Literally I had one one word, one alphabet, one sentence <laughs> on that paper. And then mm-hmm. some days I had like four or five, you know, pages in my journal. And so what I did is I took all of the pages of my journal and I created the book. And so how I found my publisher, which was just so amazing, it's just so God. I happen to be on Facebook, and she's like, hey, doing this challenge for so many days, and if you want to write a book, you know, contact me. It was very wow. minimal money, and I wrote my first book, 12 Lessons of Hills Degree, as an e-book. And I said, okay. well, I, can, I can put – put my hands to and so I worked with uh, the publisher and so I was able to have an actual book and so though what I wrote in that book is just you know real poignant real you know still in my grief journey you know and as I tell people all the time you know it can be two years it can be five years it can be 10 years 30 years you're never going to get over the loss and so Right. My grief was very fresh at that point. And so I just really felt like I needed to do something. And the ir- irony of this is my beloved Mark, he was so very private. So when you looked at us as a couple, he was very private and I was not. And mm-hmm. so for me to actually write the book and put my lessons out there, it was something that I probably should have never done, but I just wanted other people to know that this is where I was, and I wanted to just help people because I was feeling that that way, and I didn't right. want to, you know, not share what I was going through, and so that's just how the book came about. You know, and I'm learning that um, as we journey on, as we journey into, you know, grief and loss, you know, the grief process is, is, is like you stated, it's, it's lifelong. Um, it's it's not for us per se. It's to help others along the way, oh, and that's yes, how yes. you know I've been I've been looking at it. 
Um, you are so right. It ain't for us. It's for <laughs> no, us. it isn't for us. Um, yes. and, you know, a lot of times, like tonight, um, I lost. We lost. I lost my aunt about. I want to say maybe about a couple of hours ago, and so I was oh, just sitting so here sorry. like, like what you know? Oh. Okay, uh, we got this going on. I've got to do the show. I cannot let this stop me. But I'll get with them after I do the show. You know, each one is very important. You know, this show is very important to me because I'm stepping into new territory. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm exposing myself. Sorry. I'm being transparent. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it is okay. So no, um, she's ninety. She was ninety-two. Um, yes. So yes, ninety between ninety ninety-two. Yes, she she lived a very long time. <laughs> yes, and um, this devotional that you have. Tell mm-hmm. us about the devotional. Conversations with God, because I know we talk to God all the time on this journey. Tell me how yes. the conversations with God um, be- began. Well, um, I wanted to do a second book, and I was like, okay, God, you telling me this stuff. What am I going to do? And so I began to just kind of write different losses. And so I realized as I was in my um, first year or first month or so of my grief journey that it wasn't just a physical loss. And so mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, people lose their homes, people lose their jobs, right. people lose their children, and they're all different losses. And so in my brain, I'm thinking, okay, well, it's all the same. But as I begin to talk to other people, I realize that it's not the same. So someone can lose their, like you just lost your aunt. You can lose your aunt or you can lose your home for whatever reason. You can lose um, your job. You can lose uh, ideas. You know, you went to the, the office meeting and you said, hey, this is a really good idea. We should move forward with it. But then someone steals your idea. That's a loss at that point. Right. And so it is. you're like, well, wait, wait a minute. What you wait a minute, you just stole my idea. And so when they <laughs> get in front of the corporate people and the managers or whatever, they, they mm-hmm. share your idea. And it's something that you share it with them in confidence or even if even if it's not in confidence, something that you, you were really proud of, you share that with them, they stole it. And so that's how Conversations of God uh, came about. I just felt that after that, after the physical loss, there's so many other losses. And so God needs to speak with you in those losses. And so the format right. of the book is, you know, with the different type of losses that you may have. And so a, a little story to narrate what that loss may be and a scripture so that, you know, you know that God is still with you no matter what that loss is and just something that will inspire you to move forward and that in that particular area of loss. And so that's how the book came about. Well, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is so, <laughs> so beautiful. And it's speaking confirmation to some things um, with myself as well. <laughs> you mm-hmm. just never know the, the connections um, that you'll have with someone. is like, okay, uh, how, do I, how am I supposed to get started? And now I'm listening because I've written some things down and right about about a devotional and it's just this has been confirmation. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I, I thank you, so, Jesus. I'm so happy <laughs> that I'm able thank to you, just Jesus. inspire. You know, as How you know, has, it's, it's yes. a, a easy journey. It's not an easy no. journey to go through, and so you know, it's like I got to do this and I got to move forward, and so just being able to help others um, along the way is, you know, what, what, what's the most helpful. And it, and it takes a toll on you mentally as well. How yes. has, um, how have you dealt with it mentally? Well, uh, as a therapist, um, you know, when you're in school, they tell you to get a therapist. And so I'm like, yeah, I don't need no therapist. <laughs> 
but I actually had to seek my own therapy. And so I um, wanted a therapist who only dealt with grief and loss because Mm -hmm. I just knew that if I felt, if I connected with someone who that was a specialty as a therapist, I know what I'm looking for. And so I want someone who that was their only uh, specialization. And so it took me a little while to find a therapist, but, you know, I was a little bit ashamed in the very beginning to seek therapy because I'm a therapist. I'm like, I don't know this stuff. But I just <laughs> realized I couldn't deal with it on my own. I couldn't therapize myself, as they say. Right. So I found someone who's whose specialty was grief and loss. And so I was in therapy with her for probably well over two years because I just really needed to have an outlet to be able to move forward. And so I'm just so grateful for the time that I have spent with her um, because she helped me to be able to unpack things that I never thought about, things I never even saw you know, she helped right. me unpack that. Um, my church community, my church family was so instrumental in helping me move forward. My first lady and my pastor, shout out to them, Lady Faith and, and, and Pastor Awood. I, I mean, my church family was so um, responsive to my needs and so responsive to what I was going through. Right, right. Time. It's very important. <laughs> Yes, I, I just I, very, I can't very thank important enough for you know just all of my church family helping me get through that process, and so therapy along with my church family, along with my very uh, close friends and just my immediate family, they helped me get through the process because it was hard. Uh, my colleagues, my colleagues, they helped me get through. It sounds so much, so much like my story. Without that, you know, without the church, um, my yeah. pastor, um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm a member of a very small congregation, but okay. to me the numbers didn't matter. It was the um, the compassion and the care and the understanding, and yeah. how he walked me and walked he walked me through it. He walked with me um, through the initial diagnosis, you know, doing the feeling the decline of my husband and his, you know, with his cancer. Yeah. And when he passed away, um, they were just there and there, yes. just there, yes. <laughs> yes. you know, and I, I can't thank it. him enough. I, I can't thank him enough, you know, and then like you say, with family, um, you know, you have that, um, I call it my bill. I call them my village. <laughs> oh, I thank yes. God every the day, village. you know, for the village, um, yes. you know, you know, cause when you have children involved, they need an outlet as well. Yes, um, they then, do. Like I had a teenager. So, do you all? Did you all have any children? We didn't have any children together, but okay. I had a okay. four-year-old at the time. Okay. And so, um, is she four? Maybe she. She just turned ten. So, okay. You know, <laughs> I, I had to think about like she just had a birthday. But, you know, we didn't have any children together, but he was really in her life and focused and right. caring for her and making sure that he was there to help raise her. And so right. um, he was very instrumental, you know, in her upbringing. And so, yeah, I mean, that 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 takes a toll, too, because at some point she began to miss him. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do, you know? Like, right, right. Me. I gotta figure out how to support her as she is missing him. And so, as a little person, yeah. it looks different from an adult to a child. And so, I had right. to figure out what to do to help her get through that process. And how is she doing now? She is doing so much better. She is. She just turned ten. And so she's the 10-year-old that people say that happens. She's a preteen. And so she's <laughs> doing really well. <laughs> she's doing really well. Ooh, the queen, you know, the queen. I still worry sometimes about um, her missing him and that kind of thing. Right. And so, you know, because he played such a instrumental part in her life, you know, as a young person, you know, but 
So far, she is good. You know, she's exploring being a young person. She's in the choir at school and on a roll. That's wonderful. That kind of, yeah, on a roll and that kind of thing, you know. So I'm just praying that God continues to cover her, you know. Right. So Amen. That, um, Amen. Yes. <laughs> Amen. That is to cover a, her. Yeah. In her yeah, life. Keep his loving arms, you know, comfort. A- Amen. You know. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Around her at all times, yes. at all times. Yes. And I know yes. that, um, you know, with the loss of a spouse and, you know, we dealing with our feelings, you know, we have to, um, we have to learn to adjust to our new reality and to yes. like, focus on the things we can't control. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and that has been one of the things I've had a very hard time dealing with the, the things that I can't control. I need to, this needs to be here. This, and so I'm, and the, I'm learning, but it's a hard lesson of me letting go. You got to let it, you got, you got to let some things go. You just got to let it go. <laughs> so I'm it's in the process of, um, it, it is very hard. It is very hard. It is I don't very want hard. to let it go. To be honest, I just want to keep me right where I was and just figure this out. But you can't. You have to you keep can't moving let it go. forward. You can't. Mm-hmm. You just you, <laughs> you know, focus on those things that we only can control. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Those things that we can control, you know, and the grief of it it'll lessen, you know, it'll lessen, you know, it'll get how do I wanna say it? It it'll it will lessen as time goes on, but you'll still you'll still be greeting. That's what I wanna say. <laughs> That's no, but you, you're to so say. right, Veronica, because it, it the 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 initial shock of and you know this to be true, the initial shock is so hard. You you feel like you're suffocating, you can't breathe because you're oh my God. passed away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they passed yes. away. And so as the years and the time begin to move forward, that suffocation is not as strong. You know, right. it's not, it, it doesn't hurt as much, but that doesn't mean that you're not still grieving. You don't still love them. And so the thing is, and, and I'm learning this too myself in the three, three is almost four years that every day that I wake up, I don't necessarily have to cry in order to miss mm-hmm. Mark. You know, in the very beginning, I cried every day. I couldn't hardly get out of bed. My stomach was hurting. My head was hurting. I had all these somatic symptoms, and I'm just like, I can't do this. I don't necessarily get out of bed every morning and cry because he's not here. But I used to have my moments, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the evening, whether it's at night, where I miss him and I want him to, I want him to, walk the door or whatever. That doesn't mean right. I, I, I don't miss him any less, but right. it's not the crushing, my stomach is hurting, my heart is, you know, hurting, that right. kind of thing. So I know. can't breathe. I can't breathe. Yes. And I, and I, yes. and you go through that and say, I can't breathe. I can't breathe today. Yes, Oh, ma'am. God, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> yes. So it's not that anymore. But that doesn't mean, you know, because it's time, you don't miss them. Time you don't miss them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That you don't still miss them. Absolutely. You know, like, um, I miss the, um, the, when he would come in sometimes late from work. And mm-hmm. sometimes he would, he would ask me to make chicken salad. Cause <laughs> okay. And I would know what exactly I would sleep. He'll say, "Hey, um, I bought you some chicken. Um, and I left it in the um, refrigerator for you." I said, "Okay, I know what that means. He's working you late, and he means. wants yes. chicken salad." So he said, yes. "I left you some cash just in case I don't have all of your ingredients." I'm like, "Okay, thank you very much." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so I miss those I times it. of you know of getting up, knowing exactly when he's going to walk in the door, and having a chicken yeah. cup. I don't. I guess I spoiled him by making the chicken salad, having it warm when he would get in, not cold in the refrigerator. You know what? But it, it was. You, just, <laughs> you did some good old cooking, then I'm telling you, because being like this. <laughs> oh yes, 
Yes, he <laughs> loves to eat, and he was a great cook. I tell you, yes. that man could cook, honey, honey, honey. He okay. could cook. <laughs> And my mom always you said, okay. And so wonder you haven't you you were you weren't as big as a house that man because that man know he could cook. I say, ain't it? (laughs) I say, ain't it, girl? He could cook. Oh yes, he could cook. Oh honey, whoo! How I miss those days. (laughs) It's not that I can't cook. I can cook. But he he could cook cook. cook. Right. <laughs> he could cook cook cook. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know, and with that, you know, with that part missing, like you have to um create a new adaptation, you know, your routine has to change. Okay, Veronica, now you got to do this because you know you didn't do this. <laughs> okay, you know, the Veronica, kids are I like haven't figured that out yet. I I have not figured that out. I am still you cooking. Have a, for him, unless <laughs> like he's still here. I mean, I okay. I cannot help it. I I mean, I love to cook anyway, and so mm-hmm. I cook like like Sunday, for example. I cook macaroni <laughs> and cheese and pot rolls with potatoes and carrots and celery and onions. <laughs> like I'm cooking for like a football team. I cannot <laughs> help it. Because I'm used to cooking for him, and he's been deceased for mm. years. But yeah, that's 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 the way I, I learned. I mean, my mother mm-hmm. taught me very well how to cook, and mm-hmm. so I ain't figure out how to decrease that. And so I had to call my friends and say, "Hey, <laughs> I cook. Come get, Come get some food. <laughs> I can't eat all this about myself. Just exactly. Cooking for." People, you know, it's, it's just mm-hmm. me and my daughter. She'll eat that much. But I've not got right. like, the mindset of you don't have to cook for, you know, four people or whatever. I just can't yeah. help it. But, I mean, that's just part of my coping and my healing process mm-hmm. in terms of like feeding what, um, people. Because and, it's yeah, love. feeding the people <laughs> is love. Love and feeding the people is love. Is love. Yes, it is. It's love. Yep. You know, like with, yep. like with me. I think with me adapting to that particular um, routine of the cooking routine, I was in a process of empty nesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's like you, you're grieving the loss of your husband and you're grieving because you're empty nesting. So I had all these losses at the same time. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's hard, though. It is very, it's very, very hard. It's hard. And... But I've learned, but I but I had to learn to decrease the cooking. I'm like, Veronica, it's only you and Olivia in here. Jordan comes home every now and again. So so when I would cook like that, my daughter would call, hey, I know you cook something. Just come on out here, girl, and get it. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know? But I got to that place where he began to um, have her friends so they were going out, and they were eating where they were at. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm home alone. Well, I'll just go out and get me something to eat, or i just cook enough just for me. And then sometimes she would come home. Hey, did you cook for me? Were you out with your friends? Yeah. <laughs> Were you out with your friends? That's a transition. That's a transition so. you got to figure out. Yes, it is. And, I, and, I've, and I've learned and I've mastered that. I have mastered. When are you cooking? I'm not. It it will come. It will come. Okay. It it will come. Because I can tell you. I tell them all the time. I'm not cooking. Did you cook? What? No, I did not. (laughs) And I I feel so good saying from your book because I'm so not there. I'm not. It will come. It it will come. It will come. It believe me. It will come. You're gonna say, okay, I'm, I'm, I got all these fixings and uh, the old folks say the buildings in here. <laughs> yeah, yep, you're right. And you're what, right. And my daughter doesn't eat that much, and I know that I'm not gonna eat all of this. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this. So when I grocery shop now, I just get exactly what Veronica is going to need and cook okay. for the next. Uh, I'll say about maybe about three weeks. Okay, uh, you know I get yeah. a shop about about three weeks, but. Other than that, you know, I have other people that feed me. 
I have a color well, that's a wonderful I, I, color. I'm going to need your shopping list then because I can't okay. do that. <laughs> My mom's a wonderful cook. Yeah. Yeah. My mom's a wonderful cook. And, you know, they'll call and say, hey, I cook. Okay, I'm coming because it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> so you know so what? I'm, I'm the opposite mm. because I will cook. I just will cook, and I will say, "Okay, mom, I'm bringing some food over." She be like, "Pack it on up." She's like, "You cook too much," <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll take her food. I'll take my friend's food. I'm like, "Come and get the food because it's too much. I can't take it." And they gladly <laughs> just come and get it. And so you know, it's gone. You know, but. I need to take a page out your book so that I can figure out how to streamline my process. <laughs> yes, yeah, so and make sure you don't forget the ice cream, okay? <laughs> you know, oh, that's my mom. Don't forget the like, ice cream. That's her favorite. I'm not a sweet person like that. I like uh, potato chips and popcorn, things like that. But my daughter has the sweet tooth. Her and my mom do the ice cream, and they like the cake and pies and I mean I eat I eat it but not like that they, that's their not like that's that that's their thing that's their <laughs> the mother grandmother grand, grandmother granddaughter Grand, granddaughter I, that's not me they're bonding I, that's their bonding they, yeah that's their bonding moment I want ice cream I want cake that ain't me but I don't take that away from them that's their thing you know, with that ice cream, but I just don't. I that ain't me. You know. Mm-hmm. As the but, um, and she loves it. Yes, that's that's their bonding time. Um, it you is. Know, as a co-author of um, the Awake Anthology, how did that come about? The the Awake and I love that the Awake Awake Anthology. Tell us you about know, that. But, I was in a uh, group coaching program with the um, author, uh, with the visionary is what I have to call it, the visionary okay. of that particular anthology. And so she she had said, I'm going to do this anthology, and it's going to be an audio recording. Because I had been okay. in another recording with her before um, where it was audio. And so right. it come time to actually create the project, and she just said, you know what, we're going to do a book. I'm like, really? I was thinking about, okay, the audio version. I'm like, okay, I can talk. Right. I can share my story audio. And when she said book, I said, you know what, I have to really jump into this project. And so I was really excited that it became a book project. And so um, I just did what I would normally do, audio, make it a book project. And so I was just so excited to be able to share my story once again, you know, because mm-hmm. every time I share my story, it's something different in terms right. of what my grief process has de- has been. And so um, I understand that from my initial uh, working with her in that Awake Anthology, she has done like three, four, five different uh, book projects um, since then. And so okay. I'm just grateful to be a part of, that project at the time and where I was able to share my my continued story because, of course, right. my story doesn't end, but it's my continued story about where I am in my grief journey. Right. Did you at any point find yourself in on this journey impatient or lethargic, you know, like you want to withdraw and don't want all to, of that. Um, all, all of that. that. <laughs> all, all of that. One hundred percent. I'm like, Lord, what is this? I'm like, I'm tired of talking about grief. I don't want to be bothered with this no more. But I have, I had developed a following of people who are like, okay, what you do? I need to figure mm-hmm. out how to do this because I can't do this on my own. And I just remember. Really poignant, one of my childhood friends, it was time to write the thank you cards to send out to people who would uh, come share their memories and their support for Mark, you know, at his funeral. And so one of my girlfriends said, hey, I'm coming to your house. I don't care what you say. I'm going, I'm going to do this. 
And I just said, right. oh, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. You know, no big deal. But at the time, his mother was battling her own uh, cancer. And right. so, mm. unexpected, mm. she she eventually passed away like four months later. And so I eventually wow. had to deal with the passing of her, you know, four wow. months later. And so it was very devastating to me. Right. But she uh. said to me, I'm going to help you write the cards and support you in this process. And I was like, girl, no, I'm I'm good. Because I was just like, I'm tired of this. This is some bull. <laughs> I'm, I'm not tired of this bull stuff. <laughs> I don't want to be bothered. And she said, I'm going to come and hold your hand and help you through this journey. And that mm-hmm. just really gave me so much energy right. to do this. And so I wrote cards and I was crying and not in all of that. She just <laughs> said, I have not been through this, but I, you, my friend, I love you. We're going to go through this together. And so, oh, my God, that was such amazing. And so when her mother passed away this year, I was so hurt. But I just wanted to be there in the way that I could be. Right, right. In the way that I could be, you know, for her. And so I check on her often. And I, more than anything, I pray for her, you know, because... She loved her mom to pieces. And so mm. I may not be able to physically be there for her because we're in the pandemic and, you know, that right, kind of thing. Right. I pray for her often, you know, while she's dealing with her own grief journey. Because oh, okay. I just, I don't, know how else, I don't know how else to do it. I don't know how else to be a part of her life. with the And I just find, you know, with, you know, with the restrictions that are in place because of the pandemic. It's so hard, Veronica. And before, you know, that is, um, like, I have a, a good friend, but I call her my aunt. She just lost her mom yeah. um, due to COVID. Yeah. And, you know, you have to follow what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Um, I was going to reach out to her, but the Holy was like, she'll call you. When when she's ready, she's going to call you yes. to pray. So all I did, I just kept praying. These times people come in my spirit. I would pray for her. Um, I had some other family members. They come in my spirit. Don't call. You know, the, you know, the, the Holy you Spirit, you know, call them. it. Yes. You just have to pray for them, and they will reach out to you, you know, in, in, that, in, uh, in their own time. And I just found That's that very wonderful. comforting. I think I, I, I pray. Not I, not I think. I pray all day long. I pray <laughs> all day long. You know what? I think God, I think time, his ears are just dragging him around. He's yeah. probably, <laughs> and my angel is probably saying, God is Veronica again. Yeah. <laughs> Put I your ear here. Here she is. <laughs> I, I just called a friend of mine today. She she disclosed some, um, something that's bad to me today in terms of her health. And I said, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you got to get in that prayer closet. And she said, huh. what? And I said, well, in my office at home, because I'm working remotely, and so I have a a bench, a settee, as they call it. I guess that's a mm-hmm. long bench. I got a chair <laughs> and a pillow. And I said to her, you know what? Another girlfriend of mine said, sometimes you got to get in that prayer closet. I said, you know, I know you're not going to tell me everything that's going on at this moment. I said, but just know I'm going to be in my prayer closet for you because I want God to move in your life and right. fix whatever it is that you want to do. And she was like, really? I said, I don't get on my knees often, girl. I said, because I got arthritis and stuff. <laughs> I said, but I'm going to get on my knees for you and I'm going to get in my closet. I said, because I want God to do whatever he needs to do. I said, and if I'm praying and your mother is praying and everybody else is praying, God gonna work this work this thing out, and you gonna be okay. Oh yes, He will. Yes, He will. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm a witness. Right. Oh yes, yes He will. Let me ask you this, um, Cherie. Um, I know as a when you're married, you have, I guess, you have couple friends, mm-hmm. and when your spouse is deceased, or you know is is deceased, then you're in this single status. How have you been able to um, to um, handle that? 
from going from Mrs. to Miss, with, with, you know, like I got you, these with, with couples you know off here as friends, and then now I'm single. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. I ain't gonna. I, I don't like, like it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I enjoyed being with a partner. I enjoyed being with someone who understood me or who tried to understand stand me. I enjoyed mm-hmm. spending my Saturdays, which was date night, whether oh I was my at God. his house or whether <laughs> <laughs> whether I was at his house or my house or just watching a movie on Netflix and popcorn and stuff. I enjoyed that, and I enjoyed him asking me, what happened at church today, babe, or what happened? Veronica, I don't like it one bit. But I have learned that when God says so, he's going to bless me with mm-hmm. another partner. And so I just have to be open to what that looks like. I right. I don't like it at all because I don't like being by myself. I like to be lonely. But, you know, it's not in my purview. It's what God says. And so I just right, to right. follow him. And just wait on, you know, him to be Way able God. to, yep, him to be able to share with me or put the right person in my path that he right. wants me to be with. And I, I can't stand that. I can't. But I, I don't like it that. either. Um, we were married for 22 <laughs> years, so I, I don't like it either. And I tell God all the time, I don't like this. But I know it's a purpose in this. I'm, and I, sometimes I say, am I, am I really talking to him like this? And so this is how I feel right. today. <laughs> I'm, I don't I like it. That. I'm like, God, what I is like this? this? I, I don't. I, I just, I, I, I think the, the thing that I miss was really the date night. And not necessarily just we watching a movie, whatever. But the, the time that I spent with him and the time that he was with my daughter she loved mm-hmm. to be able to play boxing and different things with him. Just the fact that she knew she would be here every Saturday. You know, she knew that or, or we would be there every Saturday, just just uninterrupted. This is what that looked like. And so it was right. a routine for her and so it was a routine for me. And so the, the fact that we don't have that routine anymore, you know, I think is what is still challenging even three years later. So she'll jump in my bed and say, Monday it's movie night, what are we watching? And I'll forget about it. Because I forget. Because I'm I can doing other stuff. But she reminds okay. me. And so I think that's mm-hmm. probably about one of the hardest parts of the project. I know like with Olivia, her and um her and my husband Reginald, her dad, they would every Monday night was wrestling. And yep. she, he would always buy her white powder donuts every <laughs> Monday. <laughs> yes. So they're downstairs, and I say, oh, sometimes they would try to come. I said, listen, we're not doing the powder donuts and wrestling upstairs. You guys need to take it out there. I need a little quiet. I need a me time. Me, my me time is when they were watching the wrestling. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that was something you know, between them and they loved mm-hmm. it. And like you stated, you know, about the dating, like the date nights, you know, because I miss our breakfast. We had breakfast dates or we would do okay. lunch dates. And he would, he would tell me, okay, we're going to lunch today, um, Veronica. No tomboy. Can you look a little girly today? I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. Right. I get to put on some heels and a little cute little sexy mama dress. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Like, I'm going to be cute. I get this. <laughs> okay. And sometimes, like a lot of times when he would come home from, um, I think it was about every quarter they would have a, a business meeting. He would go to this business meeting. And when he would, you know, at 16, he would tell me, Veronica, I'm on the way home. Meet me at this particular restaurant. I say, I already know the routine. Come dress like a girl. <laughs> oh, cool. So, you know, and he would be gone from like Wednesday to Saturday. So you gone this like right, almost in the middle right. of the week till that Saturday. I'm like, okay, I better look like a girl. I'm, I got to get girls. Like, ah, this. this is gonna be I good. I got me. this. I got yes. this. I got this. You know, then he would come bearing gifts at times. I'm like, oh lord, you buy me no more clothes. I'm not gonna give me a story. Right. <laughs> like, okay, you want to stop mm-hmm. 
Yes. You know, with the almost, you know, with the world, you know, confronting, confronting, you know, losses, large and small, how can people cope with grief? What do you tell your people how to deal with, you know, their, their, how, their what's the coping mechanisms of, of grief? Well, one of the first things I recommend is that they find a support system. And what I stress to them is it does not actually have to be a family member. Mm -hmm. It can be a colleague. It can be a friend. It can be a church member. It can be a neighbor, someone else that you trust, that you feel that you can share your innermost uh, secrets with whatever, just someone who you trust. Because at this point in our lives, you need a support system. And so the next thing I share with them is to have gratitude in the time that you share it with your beloved. And so they kind of give me the side eye, and I say, you know, <laughs> the time that you have shared with that person, you can never um, give that away. But the gratitude that you share in that time, no one can ever take that away from you. The exactly. time that you shared the lesson that you've learned, the mm -hmm. love that you have learned to engage with in that time frame that you've had that person, no one can take that from you. And so think about the gratitude that you had in that season, you know, because we all go through seasons. And so, you know, the Bible verse that people know is the, work, the best is Ecclesiastics. You know, there's a time for grieving and laugh and this and that. And so I tell people all the time there is a season for what you are going through. And so, you know, know that the gratitude is a part of that because if they were not here, they would not be able to share A, B, C, and D that they exactly um, that they shared with you. And so make sure that you, you think about the gratitude that they uh, shared with you. And so those are the, the, the two biggest things that I tell people in terms of having the support system and having the gratitude with that, the lesson that you've learned from them, you have been right. able to share from them is what is the best. Yeah, that, that's very, that's very, very, very important, you know, to have that support system. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a family member and gratitude. I have a gratitude jar, you know, that I just tell God, thank you. And then I Ooh. always you know, put in a gratitude jar, um, you know, the times that we had together, you know, I, just a good time, and it's not. And I'll say, okay, mm -hmm. God, this happened, and this wasn't a good experience, but I learned from it to be grateful. Yep. Um, in it, <laughs> absolutely, you know, and that's true. That's true. I have having a job. You know, and tonight I have, you know, I have thoroughly gleaned, and you know, about you know, becoming, remaining hopeful, remaining inspirational, and con and I have to continue my healing on this journey. Um, before we close, Sheree. Will you tell our listening audience how they can reach out to you and, you know, for Hope, Inspiration, and Healing, and what platform? Oh, sure. Um, they can reach me on Instagram, um, that Instagram.com forward slash author underscore Sheree B. Uh, they can also uh, reach me at um, my Facebook page. It's um, Facebook.com uh, forward slash authorist Sheree Barnes. Or if they don't feel like going through any of that, they can go through my <laughs> own personal Facebook page. It is facebook.com forward slash Sheree Barnes or facebook.com forward slash Sheree Seeks. And so all of my links and everything that I have uh, is on my personal Facebook page. If they want to send me a friend request, if they want to just go to the links on my page, they are welcome to do so. How can they purchase your book? Um, I have books available at Amazon. Um, they okay. are um, at www.amazon.com forward slash author forward slash Sheree Barnes, or they can go to um, my uh, personal page at www.thehillagroupcommunityllc.com forward slash shop. Okay. I know that's a whole lot. And <laughs> <laughs> and also, 
they can join the free Facebook community, community, the healing group. Yes. Well. Yes. We have our three year anniversary coming up on October the 28th. And so okay. I founded the Facebook community for people who wanted support during their grief and loss journey, because I was going through my own stuff. And so I wanted right. to be able to share with people that, I love that I communed with, that I connected with, um, that, hey, this is going on. And so um, they can join the Facebook community. There's like a, two or three questions that I need you to fill out as you're okay. coming to the community so that I can know, you know, what I can do to help you move forward. But it, uh, it, the community is uh, www.facebook.com um, forward slash groups forward slash healing, I think it's healing speaks, or they can do bit.ly forward slash okay. healing lives here. And they All can right. gain healing lives into, here into the yeah. Facebook community. Yep. Okay. That's I it. like that healing lives here. <laughs> and it does yep. live here. Healing lives bit.ly healing lives here. And, you know, so the, the couple of questions I have and you know, you'll be invited to the group where you have inspiration and we we laugh in a group. You know, I, I, I do laughter because laughter is still medicine. And so it's right. not always about the, the, the loss and the grief, you know, it's about other things. And so, you know, I want people to feel comfortable in the group. And so we're celebrating our third year anniversary and I'm so excited. So, yeah. Wonderful. I'll be joining the group when we sign off. <laughs> okay. I'll be coming to the healing, I the would, healing group. I, I sure it. will. Um, I as it. we come to this close, I always close out um, Pearl's with Veronica in prayer. And this sure. is our prayer on tonight. Jehovah Jireh, O oh God, our provider. God, we thank you for keeping us as we walk and learn on this journey to become better with hope, inspiration, and healing. God, show us how to minister to others through our own grief. God, you are able to do all things but fail. God, we are grateful. We are so grateful. God, we thank you that you are here for us. God, comfort our listening audience during their grief. Oh, God, and keep us during this pandemic. For there is none like you, oh, God, none like you, God. God, keep us in comfort as is our prayer. Thank you for tuning in to Pearls with Veronica with my guest, Cherie Barnes on Jerry Royce Live, Positive Power 21 Christian Media, and Spreaker Podcast Live on this Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Cherie. Thank you so much. God bless you too. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God believe also in me brothers and sisters we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope for we believe that jesus died and rose again and so we believe that god will bring with jesus those who have fallen asleep in him according to the lord's word we tell you that we who are still alive who are left until the coming of the lord will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thank you for joining us, Pearls with Veronica. Thank you for tuning us on Tuesday night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us and share the file. I'm Jerry Woods Live Worldwide, and welcome to Positive Power, Double X Act Christian Media. Thank you, great day. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.
Podcast. You know, we got to get this thing together here. I know what you're talking about. We got to let them know that they got to give God the praise. Got to do that. All they got to do is get up. And get their brakes on. Right here. Come praise the Lord. Come to me then. Come praise the Lord. Come clap your hands. If you believe you made your feet, just move your feet to the beat. Come praise the Lord and sing your song. Come praise the Lord. Everyone, if you believe you made your feet, just move your feet to the beat. When I think about all you done for me. To, to, to let the awesome one shine. Yes. The awesome one, Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hello, 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 world. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah is right. We just thank the Lord yeah. for this opportunity. Yeah. Once again, to just um, turn our attention to yeah. the greater one. Yeah. You know? um, so I just thank you that he's our strength today and Woo. that we are overcomers today. Yes, and, Lord. 
Everything is under our feet. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Worry, doubt, fear, unbelief, stress. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's placed it under his feet. Yeah. Because we say yes to Christ. Yes. Glory. Glory to God. Yeah, what she said. What she said. (laughs) Glory. Glory. (laughs) Was that a prayer? Just exhortation. As an exhortation. Hallelujah. Our, our guest that we have on uh-huh. today, she she was given some, you know, exhortation and it just transferred to me. And oh, now I'm like exhorting the people too. So you're on fire. <laughs> wow. 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 You already given up the goods. Don't tell who it is yet. Man, no, no, no. I won't no. spill the beans. Okay, okay, okay. Transference okay. is very powerful. Yes, yes, yeah. Because now it's transferring on to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lord knows, He knows what we needed. Okay, all right. Well, let's let's bring it down a notch. Let's bring it down a notch, okay? Because um, well, you know, obviously, I'm Mr. Devil Slayer, and I'm Mrs. Devil Slayer, and this is the Love Chapters, right? Yes. On the this Jerry the Royce chapters. Positive Power Twenty One Network. Yes, Pons thank you so much, family. Jerry Royce, yeah. for uh, having us on your network. Yes. Yeah, to promote our radio show, the radio show that God gave us. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. The love chapters, ladies and gentlemen. It's all about the love. It's all about the love. And that's what we're about. But before we get started, Kia, First Lady, can you do the honors of praying us in? Sure. Lord, we thank you for this time that it's blessed. Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, what you have for us to say, Father, that it will pierce the minds and the hearts of all those that have tuned in. Yes, and Lord. we thank you, Father, that it would be all of you and none of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. 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 And yeah, we got we got a special guest on the show that we're going to introduce in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're going to talk about what we've been talking about. We've been focusing on love. From our first series, from our very first series on the Jerry Roy Show, yeah. What's love got to do with it, right? What's love? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. okay. Yeah, we're not going second, but yeah, that that, that that was a hot song. Love has okay. everything to do with it. everything. It does everything. And so, um, guess what, babe? That was nine episodes ago. Really? Wow. Yes, it was nine episodes ago, and now we're up to our tenth anniversary episode. Wow! Ten weeks of being on. The air with the Jerry Royce Pot of the Power 21 Network. You know, this really takes dedication, you all. Wow. It, it yeah. takes dedication every Whoa. week, you know. <laughs> yeah. To get to, yeah, because because if you if we just gave you a smidgen of what our life is like, <laughs> wow. No, we're not complaining, but whoa. Dedication <laughs> not just to the craft, but yeah. also dedication to the work of the ministry. Yeah. Because you're saying yes to the Lord. Yeah. And... You know, sometimes we make excuses on why we can't say yes to God. Right. But then we could say yes to other things. That's true. You know? That's true. <laughs> so. That's true. So, so who? What is your idol? And anyway, hey, listen, we want to give um, Jerry Royce a shout out for being so loving and caring and professional, most of all. And uh, we want to thank those that um, made it with us this far. Paula Beyond, thank you, Tyrone Lowe. Big bro yes, Tyrone Lowe, yes, yes. Uh, uh, and and uh, big sister Rose Mentors, Carter. Mentors, great friends. Yes, yes. Accountab- accountability people. Radio. Yeah. World. Yes, yes. So we got a long list of people. We got brother Lincoln, uh, uh, Pastor Lenny, and sister April. Yes, and, oh yes. man, the big brother Robert Bobby, yes. Robert um, Bobby Bowden, Bobby Bowden, Bobby Bowden, Bobby Bowden, and his mm-hmm. wife. There's so many people that. Um, uh, have supported us up to this point, so we just thank you. We just thank you, and yes. and we uh we pray for a double portion blessing in their lives, children's and families, yes. and friends' lives in yes. Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, okay. So again, we've been discussing the various forms of love: agape, mm-hmm. storge, e- eros, filio, or philia, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And um, th- those are all forms of love. And then and then we started to expound upon the residual. Or as my wife says, the byproduct of love. Okay, and that that that's what comes out of love. And and we found out that the highest byproduct is passion. Mm-hmm. And we spoke about the passion of Christ and what he endured through that um, 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 all the passion that he showed for us, so that um, we could fulfill the All Father's masterful plan. He he had passion. Um, to fulfill the plan of God, which vanquished our sins, all of our infirmities, our iniquities, um, so that fear, sickness, and death doesn't have a place in our lives anymore. Amen? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah? Right? Mm-hmm. Right? Well, 
Today, I wanted to speak of another byproduct that comes out of passion. That's that's a, that's a res, another residual of passion. Okay. Uh, oh no, that's another residual of love. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's something that comes out of passion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay? This thing gets deep. It all has to do with love, but it comes out of compassion. By the way, the highest form of love is who? Jesus. God. God mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. So. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever seen your fellow brother or sister succeed at something in life and they keep succeeding and succeeding and succeeding and winning and winning and winning, getting victory after victory after victory? Have you ever seen it? Have you ever wondered how they keep getting their winning ways? How they keep seeing all these victories and all these triumphs? I know, I know, um, uh, my big brother, um, uh, uh, Brother Lenny, they are always traveling. <laughs> Whenever you see they traveling somewhere, just making it. It's him true. and the whole family. We, we've been living like vicariously lit. through their their traveling Ex- photos, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like wow, <laughs> you know. And so I'm always excited to see my fellow brothers and sisters make it. I mean, but they've been such of inspiration as well. It, it is, it is, and, and I'll be like, dang, how they won again. Like hallelujah, <laughs> we <laughs> celebrate. We and then we celebrate. We you know we like wow, and, and we always saying like, oh babe, look what happened to this person. Look what happened to that person. Oh glory to God, yeah, you know. We did celebrate. We celebrate their wins. We always celebrate their wins. Exactly. And you know what happens when God celebrate when you celebrate somebody else's wins? Mm-hmm. God gives you the increase to be able to do that very thing that yes. you celebrate. Braided yes. on behalf of someone else. You took the words because right out just, of my life. My, like, right out of my we, life. we just traveled together for the first time yes. this year, right? Yeah, and, and it, it half had to do with seeing all of their yes. travels and all that stuff. And it was a desire like, we had to heart. get out too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> wow, amazing, amazing. Well, I, just like Kia says, I'm always excited to, um, to, to celebrate for my brothers and sisters because we know that it was God that gave it to them. Mm-hmm. But then, like you said, we always know that we're next in line. Right. And we didn't go out and try to go travel because this has been yeah. like two, three years, right? right. In the making. Right. In the we making. Just, we just, in admiration, be like, yeah. oh, yeah, we're looking forward to that time. Yes. It's not now. Right. Even though, <laughs> you know, we, right. we desire to. But God, right. in this season, this yeah. year, yeah. I mean, out of nowhere, yeah. made a way for us to travel yep. not just once, yep. but multiple times yeah 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 we we we, we and, and it's been amazing it's been an amazing mm-hmm. adventure um but the point of the matter is that you know that's just the tip of the iceberg and when we see victory after victory you know it just lets us know to get on our grind as well you know and and just and just not get on our grind um through our works but get on our grind and go into god to, mm-hmm. to let them know to, to, to ask him you know what's our next step mm-hmm. what's our next move you know what i mean like because it might just be their season to travel and not yeah, ours yet. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So as long as we're patient and long as we're we're happy for them, you know, we know that God is always opening up doors and portals. So right. so so what is it then that comes out of these individuals getting a victory after victory after victory? You kind of said it in the beginning, but I'm not gonna go on that. But there's something, there's something that comes out, there's a residual of passion, there's something that comes out of passion. That we're talking about here. So, dedication. ladies and gentlemen, huh? Was it dedication? Very good. Commitment. Very good. Dedication. That's not the word, but dedication is a part of it okay. as well. Okay. I think I think dedication comes out of what we're going to talk about, or it might even fuel what I'm going to the word that I'm looking for. But very good, wifey. Very good. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, get out your pens and pads. Get out your pencils. Get your uh, uh, if you don't have a pen and a pad and a pencil because you're technologically advanced. Uh, you have to get your tablet, your phone, or your Android, iPhone, whatever, get it. And I want you to go to Genesis 6. We're going to Genesis 6, verse 5, Genesis 6, 5 to 22. And we're going to be reading out of the message translation because this.